What Van Ranst is discussing is simply shocking. Van Ranst in fact explains how he has fooled the entire Belgian population during the swine flu through fear-mongering, out-of-context mortality rates and media manipulation. He laughingly explains how he managed to impose the vaccine for the swine flu on the frightened Belgian population, a vaccine produced by the pharmaceutical companies he worked for. Thank you very much, Up. Thanks for the invitation. And I was asked to, to tell you about my experiences being the, the crisis manager, the flu commissioner for, for Belgium and, and, and highlighting the communication. Uh, and then you have one opportunity to do it right. I mean, day one is so important. Uh, in day one, you start your communication with the press, with the people, and, uh, and you have to do it right. I mean, you have to go for one voice, one message. In Belgium, they chose to uh, appoint a non-politician to do that. I mean, I have no party affiliations, and that makes things a little bit, at that time at least, a little bit easier, because you're not, you're not attacked <laughs> politically, majority, minority. Uh, that doesn't come into play, and that was a huge advantage. The second advantage is that you can play in Brussels the complete naive guy and, uh, and get a lot more done than you would otherwise be, uh, be able to do. You have to be omnipresent that first day or the first days so that you attract the media attention, uh, you, you make an agreement with them that you will tell them all, and if they call, you will pick up the phone. When you do that, then you can profit from these early days to, uh, to get complete carpet coverage of the field, and they're not going to search for alternative voices there. And if you do that, that makes things uh, a lot easier. These first weeks, that's easy street. When you have no opposition and, and everybody needs news and they can come to you for news, you can bring quite a lot of neutral information and it is picked up and, uh, and it, is, it is, well, the news is brought the way you bring it and that is, uh, you can only do that in the, uh, the first couple of weeks or months. And then you have to say, okay, well, we will have H1N1 deaths. Of course, that would be unavoidable. Uh, I used there Sir Donaldson's uh, quote, where he said that in the UK, by the peak of the epidemic, 40 people would die uh, per day uh, at the end of the summer. Uh, so 62 at that time, million people in the UK, 40 deaths a day. I worked it out for Belgium. That would be seven deaths a day at the peak of the epidemic. I used that in the media. Seven Belgian flu uh, deaths per, uh, per day at the peak of the epidemic would be realistic. That is true in every year, even interpandemically. <laughs> that, that, that is very, very conservative. However, talking about fatalities is important because when you say that, people say, wow, what do you mean? People die because of influenza? And that was a necessary step to, uh, to take. And then, of course, a couple of days later, you had the first uh, H1N1 death in the country. And the scene was set and it was already talked about. And then you had to pick uh, who is going to be vaccinated first. Huh? And then, well, women and children first, whatever. I mean, risk groups, they were important. And then I misused the, uh, the fact that the, uh, the top, top football soccer clubs in Belgium um, inappropriately uh, and against all uh, agreements vaccinated their, uh, they made their soccer players priority people. So I said, I can use that. Because if the, the population really believes that this, this vaccine is so desirable that even the soccer players would be dishonest to get their vaccine, uh, I, I said, OK, I can, I can play with that. So I made a big fuss about this. This is Van Ranst is, uh, is raving mad. Uh, <laughs> but, but it worked. <laughs> 